Hi everybody, for today's video, we're going to be uh, building a random fact bot using Python. So basically the goal is to generate a random fact and send it to our email every day. So let's get right into it. To start off, we'll kind of have to plan out what we're going to really do, because it's always important to plan things in programming before you really jump in. So let's do that. Let me just open up a notepad so I can get some notes out. That is really wide. Let me just make that a little bit skinnier. There we go. So our first step should be to get a random fact from somewhere. And we'll figure out from where along the way. So get a random fact from somewhere. The next step should be kind of to create a email template with that fact. So create email template with, I don't know, let me just uncapitalize the first letter, email template with that fact. So we create an email template with that fact. Our third step should be to kind of send this email and test the functionality of sending this email to ourselves. So send this email template to ourselves slash test this functionality. And the final step should be to figure out how to schedule this whole process so we can repeatedly send emails to ourselves every day with a new random fact. So schedule process Pro I can't spell process repeat daily so basically repeat steps one to three so this is kind of our rough outline of what we need to do so let's go ahead and open a text editor to start programming this out so I'll just open Visual Studio Code and move that there. Make this a little bit bigger. Resize everything and open a new file or folder. Folder, yeah. Let's open a new folder. So I'm going to put this in my desktop in programming. Python scripts. Um, new folder fact bot we're going to select this folder yeah um close that and create a main.py you can call it whatever you want i'm just going to call mine main.py so now we can actually start programming this out and I'm just going to get rid of that. And we can also paste this in here if we want and kind of make this a comment so it doesn't interfere with our program running. So I'm just going to comment this out. All right. So we need to get a, we need to start off by getting a random fact from somewhere. And how we can really do that is how do we really get like random facts or random pieces of information? Like you can Google it, right? So go on Google and search up a random fact and you can get and there's like a list of a lot of facts but instead of just getting a list of facts and getting random lists from there I feel like it would be cooler if we could just find a random fact on the internet and kind of create a template out of that and where can you get like a lot of pieces of random facts or information well you can go to Wikipedia so you can go to Wikipedia and say you can get like a random article from wikipedia and you'd have a bunch of information on a random topic so we need to figure out how to get a random article from wikipedia so instead of just saying let's get a random fact from somewhere let's make it a little bit more specific and say something like um get a um random article 
from Wikipedia, right? That sounds pretty good. So we need to figure out how to get a random article from Wikipedia. So let's first off kind of structure our code out into functions. So start off by creating a function called get get rand article and i don't think we need to really pass anything into that so how would we get a random article well wikipedia interestingly enough has a page called um i think it is i let's just search this up wikipedia random page i cannot type uh, Wikipedia random page. So if you go here, Wikipedia has this page that whenever you click this special colon random, it just redirects you to a random Wikipedia page, which is pretty cool. So let's go back again, click another Wikipedia page. We're just getting random articles every time we click on this link. So I guess we could kind of simulate this whole process by going to this special link and as you can see if i were to go ahead and quickly inspect this page using developer tools and go ahead and click on this you can see that we have a link here which is slash wiki slash special colon random all right i'm back sorry about that just a quick interruption so as i was saying you can use developer tools and you can see that this link here has a actual like tag. It's like we're related to a link here and that's slash wiki slash special colon random. So every time you go to this URL, you're redirected somewhere else. And what you'll notice about any normal Wikipedia page or any page, as a matter of fact, that it's preferenced by https.en wikipedia.org and then there's that slash wiki slash Zay or whatever the article name is. So if we can kind of go to that slash wiki slash special colon random and make sure to add the HTTPS stuff before it, we can probably simulate this whole action of every time that you click on this link, I'll take you somewhere new. Oh, it's because I'm selling developer tools. So, oh, no, never mind. It took me somewhere new. So every time that you click on this, link it'll take you somewhere new so you can see it's just taking you to a random wikipedia page so we can kind of simulate this whole process by going to the link and making sure to add this stuff before it for the slash wiki so when we're kind of going to websites and scraping information from websites we have to use two modules so you have to import requests and you need to import something called beautiful soup, which is a tool that helps you um, web scrape. So to import beautiful soup, you first off just write from BS4 import beautiful soup. And then um, if you don't have these installed, you can just open up your terminal and go ahead and type hit install BS4 if you don't have it installed. And as you can see, I already have this installed, so it's giving me an error message that, oh, you already have this package. You can't install it again. And also, um, I'm pretty sure requests is inbuilt into Python, but if you have any issues, just pip install it and it, everything should be good. So what we need to do is we need to go to this random article by using this link. So what we need to do is first, we need to generate and download the page. So we do that. So I'm gonna set the page variable equal to the requests.get. So I'm trying to fetch the page based on the URL. So as you can see, every page that we go to starts off with HTTP this, and then there's a slash wiki, which kind of delves into more depth about the whole thing. So basically, this is our important piece. So we just copy that. And we want to get 
this URL, right? But we also want to add on to the random page element. So what we can do is I'm just going to go ahead and inspect this again and click on this so I can click here, click here. And as you can see, I can go to the slash wiki slash special colon random. So copy that. I already have the wiki here. So I'm going to get rid of it actually, as a matter of fact, and get rid of the double slash there. So basically every time we do this, we're going to end up downloading a random page every time we run it. So um, I'm going to call this function and I'm going to do that by just kind of making our code a little bit more structured out by adding an if name equal equal main. And this is completely optional. You don't have to put this. I just like it because it makes my code feel more structured. And I can call get rand article and go ahead and print page. And I have to do page dot content because if I don't do that, it'll just print the request or the code that it gives back. So if the page is active or not. So if I were to do this and run my script, first time I run it, I don't get any errors. Oh, that's massive. But you can see that this page is talking about conflicts or no, where is this? It's talking about this, something like this. This is a lot of information, but some random title, Diheothrips, I'm not even going to try and say that. So um, if we're to go ahead and run this again, it should give us something different every single time because we're going to a random link. So to wait for everything to load out. You can see we can find some random thing. Just control F, title, no results. Okay. I'm going to, oh, see, you can see 2012 Mad Madison Cash Spiel. So it's something completely different. So every time we run this, we're going to get a different page. So we're getting there, kind of getting there. So as you can see, there's like so much stuff to look through. And we don't really want to do that. So in order to handle that, we use beautiful soup. So we create a soup object and we set a any variable in this guy. I'm just gonna call mine soup, and we set it to beautiful soup. And we wanna use the page.content. And what we want to do is we want to use an HTML parser. And this allows us to do a lot more stuff with the page. Well, not really a lot more stuff. It just gives makes our lives a little bit easier when we're dealing with this page. So to go ahead and print soup.prettify, which is kind of what it sounds like. It's making this jumbled up soup, this massive page, more pretty, and printing those results more like uniform and nice. So we're to save that. If I don't have any errors, run that. It gives me an error. What does it say? Type error. Bytes object is not callable. What did I do? I think what line was the error on? Line 13. I think page.content doesn't have two brackets. Yeah, it's just page.content. Sorry about that. So if I run this again, it should, as you can see, like format the page for me. It doesn't look as messy. And that's not the only purpose of Beautiful Soup. Now I can like kind of look through all of my information. So from this, I basically have a random article and I have it organized. So now we need to decide what we really want from this random article. So if I were to just take, I don't know, this article as an example, we want a couple of things. We kind of want the URL of the article in general, right? And we also want the article title. So as you can see this, and we kind of want the first paragraph. So a summary of the article. So for example, the summary, the article name, and the URL. So let's do that. So first, let's deal with getting the article title. So how we do that is you'll notice is that the title has a specific property. So if we're to go here and inspect, 
go ahead and click this. Let me try that again. Click that. You can see that the title has an ID of first heading and a class of first heading. And the ID is unique to only the first heading, if that makes sense. So if we can figure out a way to target only the first heading, we can get the article name. So we can set of our variable article, could type article name is going to be equal to soup dot find. So within all our jumble, jumbled up soup, we're going to try and find where the class and the reason we put the underscore so Python doesn't confuse it with a keyword is equal to. And I believe it just says first heading. So we can go ahead and copy that. So where the class is equal to first heading, we want to find it. So let's go ahead and print article name. Um, let's run this. So this case, the first time we run it, we get first heading. So we get Ludwig Sutter Lin, which is what we want. But we don't want this whole chunk of the heading. We just want the content. So in order to make sure to do that, we do dot text. So it only fetches the text part of it. So once again, if we were to save this and run this, I should get a random article name. So you can see Arkansas stars. Or yeah, I think I said that right. Run that again. And this time we get Ostrigevr. And run it again. We get Furiatic zone. So we're just getting random article names every single time we run it. The next thing we kind of want to do, and what I'm going to do is I'm not going to just print the article name. I'm going to return the article name. So it's it's actually like a function. And instead of calling this get rand article, I'm going to get call it get rand article name because that's what the function is doing. So the next thing we kind of wanted was the URL of the article. So because I feel like that would be useful for sure. And oh, I forgot to change the name here. So yeah, we want to get the URL of the article. So what we're going to want to do is say def get article URL. And if we just make a observation about the URLs of or of the articles, you'll notice that you have this generic HTTPS, whatever, slash wiki, and then you just have the article name. So basically, every article is just based off the article's name. So with the article name, you just have the key to the article, article URL. So basically, what we need is the article name. So we can pass in the article name, and based on that, we can get the article URL. So what we'll do is URL equals to an F string. And this is just a new newer feature of Python. And it just makes it easier to work with strings. So basically, it the URL is the generic normal part plus the article name. So you go ahead and add that in by doing article name. So to go ahead and return URL here, print get article URL, and pass in whatever this gives us. So whatever the return value of get ran article name is, save this and see what happens. Save it again and run it, you'll notice that instead of now just printing random article names, we're printing random article URLs. So if I were to go ahead and copy and paste this, this should be a valid URL. So as you can see, it brings me immediately to this page. But one thing you will notice is for articles that have white space or spaces in between words, it's replaced by just an underscore. So in this case, you can see just an underscore replaces every single white space. So we need to make sure to account for that when we 
create this um, URL. So the way we do that is we split the article name into an array. And we make sure to split it. Oh, make sure to split it by space. So what this does, it creates this, it makes the string into a array separated by spaces. And then what we want to do is we want to rejoin that string, but we want to rejoin it with underscores dot join. And then I think that goes in brackets. So if we're to go ahead and save this, rerun it. Oh, invalid syntax. I think when you're working with F strings, it doesn't like having underscores in the actual argument. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, we're going to call it URL article name. So basically the URL part of the article name. So, and it's going to be equal to this. Maybe finish off the bracket there. And then the finished product is going to be the generic part plus the URL article name. Save that. And now let's see what happens when we run it. So now we don't get any errors. And you can see the spaces have been turned into underscores. So for to go ahead and search this out, we are redirected to the correct page. So now we have the random article name and we have figured out how to get a random article title or random article url so the next part is to get the summary so what we can call this is def get summary summary it's completely spelled incorrectly summary there we go and in order to get the article summary we're going to probably need to figure out how to take a look at all this information. And the thing about Wikipedia is that it can be inconsistent. For example, you can't just try and find the first paragraph because if you were to inspect this, the first paragraph isn't just, um, let me just make this bigger so it's easier to see. The first paragraph isn't always the summary and it's not identified uniquely. So it's just a normal paragraph tag. And it's going to be really difficult to kind of get a generic idea running about getting a Wikipedia article summary when they're all, all different. Like this could also be considered a paragraph and you wouldn't get a good summary because the first line may just be a paragraph in itself, but it's not a good enough summary. So to kind of overcome that whole issue, Wikipedia has its own Python, or Python has its own Wikipedia module, and it has a bunch of really cool features, which are going to be really useful for us to use. So the module name is just Wikipedia, and this is not built into Python. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to open up your uh, terminal, and you're going to have to install Wikipedia. So install wikipedia so just pip install and then the package name which is wikipedia and it is already installed for me so you'll get a different message than i am getting but hopefully it goes successfully for you so with the wikipedia package we can get a wikipedia article summary that is more accurate than just targeting random paragraphs by using a um, function in the module called dot or just called summary, which is pretty good, well named. And what it takes is it just takes the article's name. So you can just say summary is equal to Wikipedia dot summary. So this gives you a summary, and you need to pass in the article name. So in the get summary function, we're going to probably need to pass in the article name so we can use it and wikipedia.summary. And let's, let's give it the 
article name. So now if we were to return summary, we should get a Wikipedia article summary every time we run this. So if I were to go ahead and get our print get summary, and the get summary takes in an article name, and the way we get the article name is by generating a random article. And to generate a random article, we use our get rand article name function. So get rand article name, save this, and see what happens. Hopefully, there's no mistakes or bugs. And it's loading, it's loading. So here you go. We got one summary. So it's, that's a pretty interesting fact or piece of info is a rural locality, a village, and the administrative center of blah, 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 blah. So if I were to go ahead and run this again, it should give me a different summary. A random piece of information. So just keep on running this and you should get another summary. Oh, that's a lot longer. So a drug classification for antifungals in dermatology. So it's just random pieces of information, which you may or may not find interesting, but we've gotten a lot done. And as you can see, we've actually finished step one. We've gotten a random fact from somewhere, and we've done that by generating a random article from Wikipedia, extracting a bunch of important information from that. So now our next step is to kind of create an email template with that fact. So let's get to it. All right, so to create a template, let's just start off by creating a function and call it generate, um, generate message. And in order to generate the message, we're probably gonna need the article name. We're gonna need the article URL. I did not spell that right. Article URL. And we're also going to need the summary. So this isn't going to be the actual way you would do this. But in general, if I were getting an email with all my info, like about a random fact from Wikipedia, I'd probably format it like, um, so first I'd give the article title. So that's useful to have before you start reading. And then it'd say something like, hi, user. And I would say, I would give the summary. So I'd have the whole summary, just all in this block. And after the summary, I would say something like, find out more at, and then I would give the article URL. And then I'd say something like, um, see you tomorrow. Because it's supposed to be scheduled like daily. And um, something like random fact plot. Spelled that wrong. Random fact plot. So that's kind of how my email will look. So we can do this whole whole um, template by using something in Python called a doc string. So it's basically a string which you can kind of write on multiple lines. So it just makes your life a lot easier um, when you're dealing with large messages. So we can set the message variable equal to the doc string, which you do by adding three single quotations, and you end a doc string by using three single quotations. And what we want to do is we want to make sure this is an F doc string, because we want to be able to insert things like summaries and article URLs, which are variables or function arguments. So the way we would do that is just to add a F in front. So the way I would do this, I would say something like, hi, user. I'm just going to copy this whole thing. 
um, paste it. So as you can see, hi user, um, it'll take the value in summary, insert it into there. It'll do all of this. See you tomorrow, random fact bot. And another thing that you would want to consider is to also put the subject heading in. And when we're making this to actually send us the emails, um, the subject heading is read in and it's actually kind of stored into the subject heading line. So the way you would do that is just to write something like subject, make sure to put the colon and then whatever your subject is. And in this case, I guess you could just call your subject random fact of the day, right? And then make sure to have at least one enter space. I'm going to just put two for good measure. So here we've kind of have a nice useful template and I'm going to get rid of all of this. And what we're going to do is we're going to return the message, which is kind of our template. So instead of printing this, we're going to go ahead and print generate message. And the generate message function is going to have a random article. You know what? I think we're better off just making these variables because it's going to be a pain to write these off. So um, we'll say article name is equal to the return value of this function, right? Article URL is equal to the return function of get article URL, right? And to get article URL, we need to pass in the article name. And the next part is to get our summary. So say summary is equal to get summary. And we pass in the article name. And then finally, we got to actually generate our message. And the way we generate the message is by giving it the article name, the article URL, and giving it the summary. And then we got to print it because we're just returning it in our function. We're not actually printing it. So to go ahead and save this and run this. Actually, I'm just going to clear out the screen because it's a little bit messy right now. So once again, clear this and run this and wait for it to load. Give it a second. It says article URL is not defined. Uh, did I make a spelling error? Article A R T I C L E. What line is it on? Um, it says line fifty-five. Article URL. Oh, um, it's because I didn't spell it right here. R tickle URL. So if I were to save this, clear my screen, rerun it, it should work now. So you can see here. So it has the subject, random fact of the day, and it says, hi user, has your fact, has your URL, which you can go to, which I'm not going to do right now. And it says, see you tomorrow, random fact bot. So that's pretty cool. So we're already done step two now because we've created an email template. So now all we really got to do is figure out how to send this email template to ourselves and kind of test this functionality. And we need to schedule the whole process to repeat daily. So I'll see you guys the next step. So for the third step, we need to kind of figure out how to send this whole email and take the email template and send it So using Python. So to start off, we will create a function called def send message or send email. Why not? Or send message. I like that better. And when we're sending the message, we're basically, all we're going to need is the message itself. Or I wrote send message. I meant to write send 
email and what we're going to need is we're going to need the message right so before we actually start figuring out how to send messages using python i would highly recommend kind of creating a throwaway gmail account right off the bat because when you're um creating scripts with python you're going to have a lot of testing a lot of messing around and your real inbox is going to fill up so quickly it's going to get really messy and you're not going to like that and second of all is when you're uh, writing scripts with Python to send emails, you have to typically turn off a setting, at least with Gmail, you have to turn off a setting uh, regarding security, which makes you more vulnerable to hacks and stuff. So you can do that on your main account if you want. Um, and basically, when you have the setting off, it allows things like this bot to actually email your account. So I'm going to start off by creating a gmail account and first of all i'm gonna have to x out all these tabs there's so many maybe we'll keep one of these open just for personal use so um for testing purposes and um i'm gonna go ahead and search up create a google account so create your google account and uji programming and test Fuji test Fuji because we're just test this is our test account oh it's already taken so test Fuji programming maybe how's that yeah so that account isn't taken and for your password you can do whatever you really want and in this case I'm just gonna use um i don't know one of my own passwords and you can just confirm it and what you're going to go ahead and do is go to next and maybe put in your birthday i don't know i'll put some random random months that's not a real day. Um, I don't know, some random months or years, whatever, random date. And maybe I'll just put the gender to male and go to next. I'll just save this and I'll just agree to the terms and services. So I guess now you should be all logged in to your new throwaway Gmail account. So what you're going to start off by doing is go to security and you're going to turn off less secure or you're going to turn on less secure app access. So basically what this does is by turning it off, it allows less secure sign in technology. So using Python to sign into your email and send emails is not very secure. And usually Google just blocks that typically, but you can make sure they don't block it by turning on access. So as you can see, it's not recommended, but we're, we created a throwaway account for a reason. And now, whenever we send emails, we should be able to actually make sure the email goes through. So how we're going to actually send the email is we're going to code in our email address here. It's going to be value and in this case it's going to be um i forgot what i created it as there we go and let me copy it so we're just going to go ahead and paste it and then what you're going to do is you're going to put your password in and i never recommend putting in your actual password into the um, hard-coded Python scripts or any scripts in general. So, and I also don't want to put my password for this account, even though it's a throwaway account, onto the video, obviously, for obvious reasons. So I'll see you guys up in a bit. Um, if you guys are just using this for yourselves, you can just put your password in like one, two, three, four, or I don't know, whatever your password is. 
but mine's going to look a little bit different. I'm just going to save my password in a separate file and open that file and read in the password. And that's going to be the password um, for this email. But if you guys are just using the script at home and are okay with hard coding your stuff, you can just write it in as a string. So I'll see you guys after I've created a file with all my stuff in it. So, yeah. So as you can now see, I have everything set up. So the only thing that might be different is this line. So what I'm doing here is I'm just opening up a text file with my password stored in it, and I'm reading it into here because I don't want to hard code my password into this Python file. And this line also might look a little bit different for you. So just don't get confused by that. Don't get thrown off by that. Um, but other than that, everything else should be the same. So now what we got to do is we got to figure out how to send emails with Python. And fortunately, there is a built-in function to help with that. And it is called SMPT, or S, I'm going to mix this up, SMTP. What is it? Um, let me just think real quick. I have like really bad memory. I think it's SMTP lib. That's what it is. SMTP lib. So that's the library we're importing. So, um, and what we're going to do is we're going to import just, yeah, we're just going to import this. So what this allows us to do is actually send emails with Python and it's just an inbuilt function. So you don't have to worry about actually downloading, downloading anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to establish a connection with the Gmail server. So what we're going to do is with our function smtplib.smtp, we're going to set up a connection with smtp.gmail.com. And if you're using Yahoo or Outlook or whatever, you can just change the Gmail to Yahoo, Outlook, whatever. But in this video, we're dealing with Gmail. And the next thing you're going to do is you're going to write in the port number. And in this case, it's 587. So this is what we have so far. So you have your SMTP and your port number. And you're going to import this or you're going to open this as SMTP. The next step is to just make sure you have a connection established. So you do this by doing that. It's just a simple line. This is optional. You don't have to do it. It's just, I like having it in there. And then you got to make sure that everything is secure and encrypted by using smtp.start. TTLS. And then finally, just one last check. You're going to call this function again. And then your next step is to actually log into your account. And the way you do that is do smtp.login. And you're going to email address. So you're going to put your email address in and you're going to put your password in to log in. And that's what you need when you log into Gmail. So you have logged into your Gmail successfully. And the next part is to actually send your email. So that's pretty easy. So you do smtp dot, oops, dot send mail, or is it send email? I think it's send mail. So send mail. And when you're sending mail, you have to put the email address. You got to put who's receiving the email. And in this case, um, the person who's receiving the email is you. So you can just put your email address in and you can add your message, which we've already constructed above. So. The next part is to just test this out, see what happens when we run this. So send email and it's going to have the message just hi. 
let's go to our inbox. Let's run the script and see, first off, if we run into any issues. If not, you can see that the script executed successfully. And at 11.06, I got the email, hi. Wonderful, so everything's working. And now you could easily see how we could um, take all this information we've gotten from Wikipedia, and instead of just saying hi, we can send a random fact. So what we're gonna do is instead of constantly messing around with um, variables in if name equals to main, we're just gonna create a function called execute. And this is just gonna do all of our work for us. And it'll have the everything, like the way our code kind of just fits together. So what we're first gonna do is initialize our article name, URL, and summary. And based on that, generate a message. And based on that, send an email or call our send email function. So article name. Article name is just going to be equal to our return value of this function. If that makes sense. Article you article that I, I spelled that right url is just going to be a return value of this function and we're going to pass in the article name because we need the name to get the article url and the next thing we need is the summary which is the return value of the get summary function which also requires the article name and with that what we're going to do is generate our message and our message relies on the message function. And as you can see, generate message takes an article name, article URL, and the summary. So go ahead and paste that. And you can just get rid of the semicolon at the end. That was accidental. And finally, we're going to send our email. So go ahead and copy send email. And with the send email function, what you're going to add is the article or you know what i'm just going to paste the function definition oh no you just need the message for the article sorry so um just add in the message and if you run this you should get a random wikipedia article in your inbox so what we're going to do is run the script and see if that happens so it's loading it's loading it's loading it's executed and as you can see, uh, why did it just send me hi? That's weird. Let me, oh, it's because I'm, I forgot to call the execute function in main. I'm so smart. All right, there we go. So now this should probably work. Is it gonna work? It's taking a little bit of time. I think it worked. So as you can see, Subject is the random fact of the day. Hi, user. The common Peru bl blind snake, I'm not going to try and pronounce that, is a species of snake in the family of, oh my god, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that either. Um, find more at, at this Wikipedia page. And you can see it's the article for the thing. So if we go ahead and run this again, what's going to happen? Ran. Another interesting random piece of fact about a species of wood. Wonderful. So as you can see, we can clearly just send articles to ourselves. But this code is missing one thing. And that's when oftentimes articles in Wikipedia have some crazy text. So like, for example, if you got a random article about some ra random Russian, I don't know, person. So Wikipedia, ah, Wikipedia, Russian, something like that. Let's see what happens. When I go here. Um, no, I need, yeah, for example, you can see in the intro right here, there's like some crazy text. And unfortunately, generate our send email SMTP 
doesn't support text which isn't within the English alphabet or in the ASCII table. So what we need to do to make sure that our program just doesn't crash if we accidentally end up on a website or an article with some foreign letters or weird symbols, um, we got to decode it into UTF-8, which is just the, or encode it, I think, um, into UTF-8, which is kind of our general way of dealing with all these weird and more, not really weird, more just foreign articles. So we're gonna encode it into UTF-8. So we're gonna just do that at the generate message level. So what you do is dot encode into UTF-8. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna copy that and every time you're inserting something in, into these brackets here, you're just gonna make sure to paste that bit in. Am I missing anything? Hi user. Okay, I did it there. I got it there. Um, I feel like I'm missing something. Am I? Oh, I forgot to mention the article name. Any message? Would you look at that? I'll just do that real quick. Article name is article name. And we just got to make sure to encode it into UTF-8. So if I were to save it and run it, it's going to basically do the same thing, but it's just going to have like an extra fail safe. And one thing you will see, you'll notice that there is a B in front. And that's just because it's been converted into binary or into bits. And unfortunately, I could not figure out a way to get rid of the B. But other than that, it's exactly the same. And as you can see, we ended up on a page with some crazy, well, um, let it, letters. So if you were to go onto the Wikipedia thing, you can see these letters are not in our English alphabet. And what happened is that this program would have crashed if we hadn't put in that fail safe. So it managed to not crash and converted it into the English representation of the whole message that was not in our English alphabet. So now we've kind of completed the main bulk of the program. We've figured out how to exactly make sure that we can send the emails uh, with the template. And that was basically step three. So now all we have left really is to figure out how to schedule the whole process and to make it repeat daily. So I'll see you guys for that part. All right, so we're almost finally here. And at step four, we need to figure out how to schedule this whole process of repeating this code snippet daily. So in order to s repeat this whole code snippet um, on a daily basis, there's a couple of things we can do. The first thing is to use something called Windows Task Manager, which allows you to um, trigger certain events on your computer, such as running a script, at a certain time, um, at a certain frequency. And it, it works pretty well, um, but in it is kind of annoying to set up and configure and it can be different for different people's computers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna inbuild like a way to repeat this article at a certain time or repeat sending this article at a certain time every day um, within Python. And the thing with this is the fact that what's going to happen is that you'd have to keep this script running in the background, which is kind of annoying. But as I said, if you don't want to do that, you can just go with the first option and just go on YouTube and search up how to schedule a running Python script on Windows or on Mac using Task Manager and just use the code we have so far. If you want to just follow along with what I'm doing, you can uh, just do it within the script. So if you're doing it within the script, you can import two helpful libraries. And first one is time. So we're dealing with time, so it'd probably be helpful to import time. And the next one is scheduler. So we can kind of schedule things on a more daily basis or whatever. 
you are you want to do. And both of these things are inbuilt, so you don't have to really install anything using pip. And what we can do is first off, what we can do is um, we can set a schedule. And the way we do that is we do schedule dot every. So every what? So we don't want to do it every minute. We want to do it every day, right? Schedule dot every day. And we don't want to just do it every day. We want to do it every day at a certain time. And I guess in this case, um, if you want to do it in the afternoon, you'd have to use military time. So you can't use AM and PM in this um, with this configuration. So I don't know. You can make sure every morning at like 730, um, this code kind of uh, runs. So what you got to do is then do dot do and uh, call your function that you're going to do. So execute. And the thing is, this is kind of scheduling it. So you don't want to actually call the function. You just want to write the function name so it knows what function you're talking about. The next step is to enter into a infinite while loop because it's going to be running indefinitely, I assume. And what you would do is do schedule dot run. And what you want to do is run your pending tasks, which in this case is this. So it's going to run pending. And that's it. The last thing I like to do is just put a time dot sleep afterwards. So it just doesn't overload itself. It has like a little bit of a breather, you know, just in case. Time, time dot sleep, sleep. And I just put the breather in case I feel like changing it to spamming me every 15 seconds or something. So it just has a second to breathe and doesn't overload. So here, if I were to go ahead and run this script, it wouldn't do anything. But exactly at 730, if I were to keep the script active, it would send me an email at this test email with um, a random Wikipedia article. So. Um, that's all it really is to create this project. And now you just have a random fact box, which will send you an email every day at whatever time you really decide you want it to send it to you. And you can get more information out of it. I don't know. I think this is a pretty cool and fun project to try out. It gives you a lot of uh, ideas and context to how to really use Python a lot of the cool scripting features that Python has and how many insanely useful libraries and web scraping and whatnot you can do with Python. So I feel like I'm going off onto a tangent about how nice this project is, but hopefully you enjoyed the video. Um, I really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.